So here's the way that my waist belt attachment failed. I've actually got the pack turned upside down. So this is actually, this is the bottom of the pack here. And if you remember the way I attached uh, the waist belt to the pack frame uh, was with these rivets. And uh, what I was afraid would happen was that the cloth uh, webbing that I used uh, might tear or, or the head of the rivet might pull through, but that's not actually what happened. Uh, if you look underneath here, you can see, you can see where the head of the rivet actually just pulled off. So this one pulled all the way out. And I've got another one here. Uh, that actually broke, but it didn't pull all the way through. But you can see it's not actually holding anything anymore. Uh, and I think perhaps if I had used uh, a bigger rivet, uh, it might have held. Uh, but the real problem with doing it this way, with using this webbing, is that it gives you the, this rotation around this pipe here. Okay, and because you have this rotation, a good deal of your force is going this direction as opposed to going in a shearing direction. You get this linear component that just pulls the head right off. So I think that uh, I'm going to try a different approach uh, and try to, I'm, I'm going to completely do away with this webbing here because that's just not working as well as I hoped it would. I thought about trying some bigger rivets, but I think a better plan is actually to do something that's going to take this linear component out of the equation and hold this belt uh, in place so it won't, it won't rotate. And then the force will be completely straight down as opposed to having this linear direction and pulling the rivet heads off. So if what I, if what I come up with works, I'll let you know. But I just wanted to let you know that uh, the way I attached the uh, waist belt looks like it's not going to work with this size rivets. Okay, this is step one on uh, correcting the problem with my waist belt. So what I've actually done, okay, you'll see this is, this is the side of the waist belt that goes against my back, but if you, uh, so what I've done is replace the tiny little rivets with these big old quarter inch screws. Okay, so I took all the rivets out, uh, and then what I have on the other side is a piece of plastic conveniently cut from a piece of cutting board. Seems to be my general supply of plastic whenever I need it. So I've got these quarter inch screws going through the waist belt, through the piece of cutting board coming out the other side. And then I've got lock nuts on the back side. Uh, keeping as low of a profile as I can. Uh, I've used, uh, I had some uh, stainless steel screws and lock washers on hand. Uh, and then I bought some more that were zinc plated. Either one will work just fine. 
So then uh, the next step after this is going to be to actually put another crossbar across here that will match with the top of this. And then this is going to go in like this and then screw to this crossbar down here. And then the second one that I'm going to put across here that you'll see when I get it finished. But I just wanted to show it to you uh, in stages instead of the finished product. Uh, so what I'm actually going to have to do now is now that I've got all these holes drilled and located, I'm actually going to have to disassemble this and then put, put this plastic piece, mount this plastic piece to here and then re reattach the belt to this piece of plastic. So I'll check back with you when I get that part finished. Okay, I'm almost finished. So, as you can see, of course this is the waist belt, this is the back or front of the pack, the part that'll be against my back. And then, uh, here are the screws that I showed you before. And what I couldn't show you before was the additional crossbar that had to go across here. Get you a little bit better view so you can see how it actually goes together. So I had to put in another T right here and then uh, put a piece across there. Of course, this, this T was already there. So screwed at the bottom across to this bottom part that was already there. And then you can see down in here where I've screwed this plastic piece to the pipe. So really that all remains to be done is to uh, I'm gonna take a piece of this sheepskin and then hot melt it to this uh, part of the belt where the screws are because those would not be very comfortable pressing into your back, but hopefully this is going to pad it enough uh, that this will be nice and comfortable. The final, final weight of the pack is precisely nine pounds. Uh, I know that sounds pretty heavy to you ultralight people, and maybe it is. Uh, you know, I could have made it lighter. I could have used like metal aluminum tubing instead of this plastic pipe. Uh, and I could do that in the future if it comes out to be more than I can carry. Uh, but I think uh, the fact that the pack is going to be more comfortable because it doesn't have any shoulder straps, all the weight is going to be on my hips because it really has no other place to go. Uh, I think I'll be able to carry that extra nine pounds probably with no problems. Uh, so all that remains to be done is to put sheepskin right here and then go for a hike, uh, which I may or may not be able to get done today. It's a pretty nice sunny day here in Tennessee today. But uh, after I go for a hike to try it out, I'll uh, add that to the end of this video and wrap it up. Well, I just finished going for about a mile walk in the neighborhood. And uh, I'm going to say that everything that all the modifications that I made to the waist belt and everything, it really felt good. Uh, pack and all, I've got about 40 pounds here. Uh, of course, no pressure on my shoulders at all because there's no shoulder straps anymore. Uh, and I have to say, I'm pretty encouraged uh, about the way the pack feels, how it's performing, 
Uh, I know it's not quite the same as getting out on an actual trail, but if you don't hear anything uh, on a later uh, video, you'll know that uh, the pack is working fine. Uh, I can't think of much of anything else that I need to change to it. I would love to hear from some of you if anybody has actually tried to build their own pack or built their own pack. Please leave me a comment so I can find out uh, if this video is actually helping anybody. I would love to hear from you. But if you don't hear, get, see another video about uh, this pack again, you know that it's working great. So uh, I thank you for your patience. I know it's taken several months for me to actually finish all the videos, but I hope in some way or another that it does help you and that you can build your own pack too. So thanks for watching and bye, con Dios.